in the PMDG 737 Next Generation Groundwork from Angle of Attack. This lesson will cover the following topics. Overview of the atmosphere and its components. What is pressure? How is it measured? And how does it vary with altitude? Oxygen at different altitudes. The concept of hypoxia. 737NG Pressurization System Overview. Typical Flight Profile. Cabin Pressure Control and Pressure Control Modes. Cabin Pressurization Panel and Cabin Altitude Panel Selectors. Pressurization Protection and Relief. And a Lesson Summary. Before we dig into the 737NG Pressurization System, we need to become familiar with some pretty important concepts about air pressure and the atmosphere. The atmosphere is a layer of gases that surrounds the Earth. It's held in place by the Earth's gravitational force. There are several layers that make up the atmosphere, but for the purposes of this lesson, we'll focus on the two layers that are closest to the Earth, the troposphere and the stratosphere. The troposphere extends from the surface until about 30,000 feet and contains roughly 82% of all the atmospheric gases. This layer is where most life forms are located and all the weather changes occur. The stratosphere, which follows the troposphere after a short pause known as the tropopause, is where most airliners fly. It extends from about 33,000 feet onwards to 150,000 feet. In the lower stratosphere, there is much lesser air than in the lower troposphere, and the air is also colder and relatively calmer. These conditions make the region between 30,000 feet to 40,000 feet ideal for airliners to fly, as skin friction drag over aircraft is virtually reduced to nil. All this air that extends from the surface actually weighs a lot. The total weight of the atmosphere is in the order of 5.3 times 10 to the 19th kilograms, and all that weight is exerting a force on top of us humans. This force, when limited to a specific area, is known as pressure. Now, we don't actually feel the weight of the atmosphere over us because our body is also internally pressurized. So, pressure is essentially an exerted force per unit area. Under International Standard Atmosphere, or ISA, conditions, air pressure at sea level is measured with a barometer and is either 29.92 inches of mercury 1,013.25 hectopascals, or 14.7 psi. As we depart sea level and start climbing, the amount of air per unit volume becomes thinner, therefore the air density becomes lesser. With this, the air pressure also becomes progressively lesser. For example, the amount of breathable oxygen at sea level is approximately 21% of the total air. If the air pressure at sea level is 1,013.25 hectopascals, the mean pressure exerted by oxygen is 212.8 hectopascals. As altitude increases, air pressure reduces. Therefore, the concentration and pressure of oxygen also reduces to about 30% of sea level value at flight level 300, which is only 63.8 hectopascals. Naturally, this amount of oxygen is not sufficient to sustain life and permit cellular respiration. In simple terms, people would suffer from oxygen starvation if exposed to these pressure conditions in a condition known as hypoxia. Let's perform a similar analysis with the total air pressure at sea level of 1,013.25 hectopascals, as opposed to 265 hectopascals at flight level 330. If we convert both values to PSI, or pounds per square inch, at sea level, the pressure is 14.7 PSI, as opposed to 3.84 PSI at flight level 330. The 737NG cabin pressurization system allows the airplane to operate at altitudes where oxygen density is not sufficient to sustain life. The pressurization control system is a sister of the air conditioning system which is comprehensively discussed in the respective 737NG lesson. The pressurization system uses bleed air that is cooled and filtered 
to provide the flight deck and passenger cabins with fresh air. For the most part, pressurization is achieved by sealing the cabin when the aircraft's altitude increases, thus avoiding contact with the external atmosphere. Air is, of course, modulated and disposed overboard the aircraft while fresh new air enters it in order to maintain a constant cabin pressure. Because the air outside an aircraft flying at, for example, flight level 350, is so scarce, any form of leakage or hole in the cabin would cause a massive flow of air outward. Remember that air always flows from where there is high pressure to where there is low pressure. The more the pressure difference between the cabin and the external air, the worse the disaster would be in case a hole or crack in the cabin were to develop. An example of this was United Airlines Flight 811 in 1989, where a failure due to cargo door design flaws caused an opening that led all the pressurized air to rush out of the aircraft, carrying with it several rows of seats and the lives of nine souls. This event is known as a rapid or explosive decompression. It's important to understand the pressurization mechanism on board the 737NG to minimize the risk of this occurring to you during your flights. An easy experiment to picture how bad an explosive decompression can become is this. Insert a spoon of cooking flour, which is the passengers, into a balloon, the aircraft. Blowing up the balloon and tying a knot to it is somewhat equivalent to pressurizing an aircraft. Whenever you're ready, find a needle, poke the balloon, and observe what happens. We take no responsibility if your face is now covered in cooking flour. Moving on. In order to maintain a comfortable amount of air and oxygen for the passengers and crew, the pressurization system pressurizes the cabin to a safe altitude. The bleed air system and air conditioning packs introduce air into the cabin. But a cabin pressure control system is in charge of controlling the rate at which air flows out of the cabin by closing and opening a valve in the aft fuselage, known as the outflow valve. Cabin pressurization also has a relief system that is provided as a protection mechanism if the pressurization control system were to fail. The cabin may be saved from cabin overpressure and cabin negative pressures. Aircraft pressurization may be controlled either automatically or manually. The automatic mode control has two submodes, automatic and alternate, for built-in redundancy in case one automatic mode fails. A pressurization mode selector located within the cabin pressurization panel in the forward overhead allows the pilots to choose between automatic, alternate, or manual pressurization control. When the pressurization mode selector is placed in the automatic position, the airplane is automatically pressurized for all the flight phases. This is achieved with a cabin pressure controller, or CPC. To provide system redundancy, the automatic control system has two CPCs, but only one of them works to pressurize while the other is on standby. With each new flight, the pressurization system switches the active CPC in order to maintain an equal amount of wear and tear between both. Essentially, during automatic control, the CPCs compare the target cabin pressure with the actual pressure at the CPC sensing ports. If there's a difference, the CPC commands the opening or closure of an outflow valve in the lower right aft fuselage, as we mentioned earlier, in order to control both the cabin pressure and the rate of change of pressure. In either the automatic or alternate mode, two valves must be preset before takeoff into the pressurization control panel. Flight altitude, which is the cruising altitude, and landing field altitude, which is the destination altitude. The outflow valve is a form of exhaust for the majority of the air that is circulated through the passenger cabin in order to maintain a desired cabin pressure. Air is extracted from the cabin through grills at foot level, ducted around the aft cargo compartment, and then discharged overboard the aircraft. As the warm passenger exhaust air flows from the cabin to the outflow valve, it serves as a heater for the elements in the aft cargo compartment. 
Moving on, the automatic pressurization control mode is designed to pressurize the cabin to 8,000 feet when the 737NG is flying at its maximum certified ceiling of 41,000 feet. This level of pressurization produces a differential pressure between outside air and cabin air, which must match the schedule outlined in the following table. The current cabin pressure differential and cabin altitude can be read off an instrument in the cabin altitude panel in the forward overhead. The inner scale indicates the current cabin altitude in feet, and the outer scale indicates the differential pressure between cabin pressure and external pressure. These instruments must be used to check that the flight pressure differential is effectively within the limitations stated in the table. Cabin rate of climb may also be read immediately below the cabin differential pressure indicator with the cabin climb instrument. Many unwanted conditions may cause one or both CPCs to become inoperative, thus triggering an amber auto-fail light in the cabin pressurization panel. These conditions are power loss, cabin altitude rate of change that is too high, greater than 2,000 feet per minute, cabin altitude is too high, greater than 15,800 feet, cabin differential pressure is too high, greater than 8.75 PSI, wiring and electrical failures, outflow valve actuator failures, either CPC having a failure. When any condition triggers the auto-fail function, a master caution and air conditioning enunciator is presented. Along with this, a green color alternate light illuminates to show that the backup pressurization system is active. If any active CPC fails, the system automatically switches to the backup CPC.